Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. Alright, folks, in this episode, we're gonna answer a couple of questions that are commonly asked about trolling for the fish that made trolling famous. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over how to rig a ballyhoo for trolling for Mahi Mahi with double hooks. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright folks, so like I said, we're going over how to rig ballyhoo for trolling for mahi mahi with double hooks. I hear this question a lot from anglers, hey how do you rig a ballyhoo with double hooks? I just, I don't understand how it can be done. Well, in this episode, I'm going to simplify that process as much as I can for you and show you how to do it hands-on. I also hear the question, hey, is there a difference between rigging ballyhoo for mahi-mahi and rigging it for anything else? Yes, there is a difference. The difference is you want to rig your ballyhoo with monofilament leader. You don't want to use wire. Using wire, you are likely to decrease your hookup ratio when hunting down mahi with ballyhoo. All right, so we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to get right into the rigging right now. Okay, to properly rig a ballyhoo for mahi-mahi, first thing we need to do is make our terminal tackle rig. In order to do this, we're going to need a couple of things. A cutting tool, a crimping tool, two 5 J-hooks, about 8 to 10 feet of 60 pound test monofilament leader, and a single crimp rated for 60 pound monofilament leader. All right, so the terminal tackle rig is fairly easy. The first thing we need to do is we need to make a double hook tandem setup. To do this, all we're gonna do is we're going to take our cutting tool and we're going to open up the eye, right where the shank loops around and forms the eye and it meets back with the shank. You put your cutting tool in between there, you pinch it and it opens up the eye and creates a space. Take the second hook, feed it through there, get it hooked in, then you take the back side of your cutting tool you place the eye right in there and you give it a squeeze and you close it back up then you test it try and back it out you're good to go all right the next thing we'll do is we're going to take one end of our leader the crimp we'll be using is a double barrel crimp not a single barrel so what we'll do is we're just going to feed it through one side of the crimp All right, and you slip it on. Now what we'll do is we're going to take our hook and we'll feed our leader through the eye. And then we're going to feed the tag in back through the second opening of the double barrel crimp, just like that. And now we'll pull it down tight. When cinching your crimp down, you wanna get it as small as you can without kinking your line. All right, now we have our crimp pulled down as tight as we can go what we'll do is we'll go to our crimping tool on the head of your crimping tool it has size ranges for what diameter your line is or your crimp is rated for you will find the size range and you will use that notch on your crimping tool to crimp it close i'm going to use the smallest size range to crimp it shut now you got to be sure when crimping close to not pinch your line and to only get the crimp right in the middle You take it you put it there and you give it a good squeeze lock it in that's it what you want when your crimp is done is a little bit of flaring on this end and this end of the crimp so it's not pinching and you'll avoid what's called a crotch break give it a little tug make sure it's not going to slip and that is it this will be the mainline end of your leader. Do not put another crimp on this end, and you're gonna see why. All right, now we're moving on to the next step in this process, which is prepping and rigging the ballyhoo. To do this, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a ballyhoo of your selected size. Sharp knife, 
A ballyhoo needle with an open end loop on one side and needle point on the other. You're going to need some sort of wire to wire his mouth shut. This is a data cable, also known as a network cable. It comes out of the inside of one of these, which is your typical ethernet cable. You slice it open, you pull out all the wires, and in there you'll see a bunch of these stranded together. You just pull them out, straighten them out, and there you have it. And you'll need your eight to 10 foot pre-rigged terminal tackle. And you'll need a cutting tool. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trim off the ballyhoo's beak. So you go under here, you look right where about his mouth ends, and you're just going to trim that off right there with your cutting tool. You don't want to go all the way back to his mouth. You want to be able to sew it shut at the end of this process. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove his digestive tract. So to do this properly, you take and you start pushing right behind the gill plate. And you're going to see all of it come out of the anal cavity. And you'll actually feel it pop and come loose and you'll feel it start to squeeze out of his anal cavity and you just keep pushing until it all comes out. You want this to be nice and clear. That way he will swim properly when being trolled. When you have this, you can actually just take that and sort of keep pulling on it. Give it a good last squeeze. Make sure his digestive tract is nice and clear. And there you have it. That will all come out. You want his belly to be nice and empty. We have cleared out the digestive tract from our ballyhoo. So now that we've cleared out his digestive tract, we are going to measure up our leader. So what's going to happen is we're going to find the anal cavity, which is where the trailer hook of our double hook is going to exit. Then we're going to find where the second hook would come out. And we are going to mark that here with our hand. We are going to take our knife, remove a couple of scales, make a little incision. You want to pull it back a little bit towards the anal cavity. Do not go up towards the front because this is where the second hook will exit and you don't want it to pull up as you are trolling. So now we have this incision that we have made. What we're going to do is we're going to take our trailer hook, insert it in there, and we'll loop it around until it comes out the anal cavity. Now what we will do is we're going to take our second hook and pull it all the way up to the eye. Next process is we will take the loop end of our needle. We're going to insert it into the ballyhoo's mouth and feed it all the way down his esophagus. Going to feed the needle down his esophagus until it comes out our incision. Now what we'll do is we are going to take some of our leader. We'll make a small loop with our leader. Do not tie it shut. Hold it and we'll pull the leader back up until we get it out of his mouth. And there your, comes your leader. You just keep feeding your leader through until you get it all. Once you have your leader all the way pulled through, what you're going to do is you'll feed your primary hook back down towards the eye. Pull the leader up in there. Stuff the eye up into that cavity. And gently pull forward until your hooks lay down flat. And then you just sort of wiggle it around until it sits like it would naturally with a double hook tandem setup. And that is how you rig a bally hoop with double hooks. The next step in this process, now that we've got our hooks in, is we want to loosen up his spine. You'll feel it actually give and crack. You don't want your ballyhoo to 
have a stiff spine. You want to break it in a couple of places and make sure he's going to swim in the water. So you just make sure that it's nice and loose. Now that his spine is all loose, what we're going to do is we're going to sew his mouth shut so that he will not gather water and spin as we are trolling him. Make sure your line is pulled as far forward on the incision as it can be. That way your fish doesn't bend as you're trolling him. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the needle point end of your ballyhoo needle and you're going to push it straight through the nose cavity. You're going to clear that out real good. Now we'll take our network cable and we're going to feed it through that hole that we just made. All right. Okay, so what we've done is we've pulled about an inch of the wire through the nasal cavity. We're gonna make it about even with the end of the beak where we cut it off. We're gonna straighten out our leader and we are going to start wrapping our wire around that little piece that we had stuck through. And this will effectively sew his mouth shut. Now don't worry if the wire slips down towards his nose a little bit. You can always go backwards and cross hatch it. You just want to make sure that it doesn't slip all the way down his beak, that your leader stays about in the center, and you are just simply going for sewing his mouth shut. And then you wrap it tight, and there you have it. And that is your fully rigged ballyhoo, ready to go mahi-mahi fishing. Now this guy you can take out just like this and troll him naked, or what we can do is go on ahead and do an additive to him. Give him a little bit more flash, a little bit more flair. What we can always do is add something like a little islander to the front of him. So what we'll do is we'll take the other end of our leader, which is why we didn't put a crimp on it yet, and we're gonna take that and simply feed it through the eye of the lure and we will run it all the way back to where our bait is. And you'll let it just drape over them naturally. And you can, actually Islanders are great because they fit right over that. And you'll put that guy in the water. It looks nice and delicious for a mahi to come up and eat. Now if you don't like Islanders, or you want to try something else, you can always use what is called a chugger squid. These are great. These are just little, basically instead of squirt squids, they're cone head and they create some smoke and flare in the water. You pull them down on your fish and you're good to go. There you have it, a chugger squid on a ballyhoo. You can also always pull a billy bait mini turbo slammer in front of them. This makes some great flash and great flare makes it a larger profile in the water, tracks those fish quicker and gets you into that bite. Or of course, you can always go with the time-tested trolling skirt on top of the ballyhoo. This is one of the original ways of rigging up a ballyhoo and trolling it with an additive on it, the trolling skirt. Okay, so now that we've decided what lure we would like to cover up our ballyhoo with, now we're gonna finish off the rig by basically crimping off the other end. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take another double barrel crimp rated for 60 pound test. You're gonna feed the main line end through one of the barrels, pull out enough, feed the other end through, and you're gonna pull down and make a loop. Now this loop you don't want so small, you want it big enough so that it can fit through a snap swivel. You're gonna to wanna to use a snap swivel with a coast lock that way it doesn't pull out when you get a big strike. Next thing you'll do is come in, put your crimp tool back on it, crimp that shut. And that is it, your lure is complete. Now in order to preserve our fresh bait that we've just rigged up, what we're gonna do is we are going to wind up our leader. So we'll wind up our leader in a form like this, and we'll take another little piece of that network cable, and we're just gonna simply wrap it around it so that it preserves it. That way when we let it free, it doesn't come out in a big jumbled knot. Okay, and so now that we've got our ballyhoo rigged, before we go out, remember I said don't put any crimps on them, that way you can choose a topping lure. 
Now, we're gonna to wanna to store these ballyhoo. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to package them in how many ever you feel comfortable in a food saver bag. Suck all the air out. Keep them as fresh as you can until you're ready. And again, when you go out, you don't necessarily need to bring all of them. If you think you're only gonna troll for a little while, there's no need to bring 12 ballyhoo. Bring three. All right, folks, and that is how you rig ballyhoo with double hooks for trolling for mahi-mahi. Again, you're gonna choose your top bead lure to troll it with, or you're gonna choose to troll it bare. If you're trolling it bare, you're gonna wanna slow your speed down to around four knots. If you've got a topping lure on it, kick it up, go between four and six knots. Remember, we're trolling. We are pursuing fish that are actively hunting, making them chase down our bait. Trolling with ballyhoo, you have fresh bait. The scent and the action from it and the fact that it looks like a natural fish will more likely track fish rather than just trolling with the lure, which is why the slower speed and not wanting to wash out your bait works when trolling with natural bait. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned how to rig up your ballyhoo with double hooks for trolling for mahi-mahi. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.